It is the month of August right now, and it is hot, but so is the fishing. And in this video, our team members from Bass Fishing Declassified is about to share with you their top areas, top baits, and a couple little tips and tricks in between to help you go out and catch fish during the hot month of August. All right, everybody, just got home from a big, long trip. It's the middle of the night. You can hear probably hear the frogs and the crickets and all the cicadas in the background. But uh, on my drive today, I was thinking about uh, what is my favorite uh, area for August bass fishing. And I really had to think about it. But once I, I really started to, to give it a little bit of thought, I realized that it has to be brush piles. Brush piles are really good this time of year in August because, you know, early summer, you know, right after the, the spawn and, and then early summer, you know, May, June, July, uh, the bass are generally on real obvious offshore structure. You know, uh, if you're here on the TVA, you know, the ledges, uh, there, there's certain ledges on every single lake that are just going to produce every single year in that, that May, June, July time period. But because they're so obvious and, and people just pound those areas, those obvious offshore areas, uh, what starts to happen in July and definitely is very, very much the deal in August is those fish start getting tired of being caught so much. So they start fracturing out into, uh, you know, little, little, uh, you know, uh, wolf packs and they start roaming around and they're not in those big giant schools anymore. They're just tired of getting caught. And so they start, you know, meandering around and then they end up bumping into brush piles that people put out in the water on you know strategically on structure that 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 will be intercepted by these bass and so that is why august is really good for fishing brush piles because those bass that previously were were you know out there on those those obvious structures they gravitate towards those brush piles and uh, you, it's a really good opportunity if you can get on a good milk run to catch a lot of good quality fish and it's one of the best tournament winning tactics out there for this time of year. Um, and I wanted to show you uh, my general setup for fishing a brush pile. Uh, it's actually something that I, I recently started doing over the last couple of years, but it's a really, really good way to catch fish. And that is just a simple drop shot rig. Okay, so right here, this isn't exactly the rig that I would be throwing in a brush pile in general because I don't have the exact hook that uh, I generally use. That is packed away. Uh, we were just up north, so we're using these, these little nose hooks here. Uh, but generally, I like to use some type of straight shank hook, a very, you know, a, a pretty light wire straight shank hook. Uh, Hayabusa makes the FPP straight shank uh, hook that's that's designed as a flipping hook but the smaller one-op version is perfect for using as a drop shot and so you would texas rig your worm this worm right here is the long shots from z-man this is a really good one in the this is the uh, meat dog color really really good color purple you know those pinks those morning dawn colors all gonna work this time of year really well so um you know i'm using those those straight shake hooks and generally i'm texas rigging these these baits so uh you can use a nose hook and what i like to do is actually hook uh, the bait through the chin and just barely have the, the hook point to where you can feel it. And you can actually work it through the brush, but you definitely, uh, if you're going to be fishing a lot of brush, you want to be using those straight shank hooks so you can Texas rig your worms. Uh, but just use a simple Texas rig like this. Uh, I generally like to use like a, 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 a uh, a seven foot medium, maybe even a seven two medium heavy Versa series rod if the brush is really thick and go up to like 10 pound test, um, you know, gold label fluorocarbon is my leader material. But overall, and you don't need real heavy uh, weights for fishing brush. You know, generally I won't go any heavier than a quarter ounce, um, but uh, you know, like a, a 3 16 ounce is actually pretty good. And an eighth ounce works really well too if it's if it's real uh, you know light brush and it's not really really dense. Uh, but a drop shot is really good because the fish are just so highly pressured by this point in the summer that they really do need to be finessed a little bit. There's obviously a lot of different things you can throw at these brush piles, but a drop shot definitely catches a bunch of them. So if you're looking to catch August bass, go out there, idle around, find a bunch of brush, and rotate between them and. And you're going to find a good rotation that's going to help you catch a lot of fish. 
What's up guys, thanks for coming back to today's video. And as you heard me say earlier, I love fishing in the month of August. I love it. A lot of anglers I know do not like it. It's hot. I mean, even when I'm sitting right now, I'm in the shade, but out there it's 100 degrees. Guys, there are big fish to be caught in August, okay? September to me is the is the, is the the struggle month in a way, okay? It just depends on the weather and everything. But this month I have caught some big fish and had some great fishing days. My biggest bass in Arkansas, that's right over nine pounds, was caught during this month in this shallow of water. Now guys, I'm gonna talk about two lures, two areas of, of fish to target in this month, okay? One is a specific niche, is a little bit of a spe specific technique that I know a lot of people do not really do, uh, and I've had some success with this summer. The other one is, is a bait lure that is popular that anybody can do in anywhere. Okay guys, so the first one I'm gonna talk about is a big flutter spoon, okay guys? This right here is about to be my top lure to throw in August, okay? It's been my best lure through through June and July okay so that's why one reason I'm going to continue to throw it is uh, is because I've had success with it this summer this is a Dixie Jet Talon Spoon okay and they say it's six inches long almost three inches wide and guys I, like I said earlier this is very specific okay I'm not going to go in depth on it I might make a whole video on this guy just how I've been fishing it but with this Dixie Jet Spoon the one I like so there's a lot of big flutter spoons okay it's not the giant 10 inch or 8 inch spoon okay but it's and it fits more for where I'm at down here in Arkansas but I like how it's wide okay of course we have the extra hooks right here which are nice with hookups and guys with it being a little wider how it flutters in the water gives a vibration of course the flash is big as well where I'm targeting fish with this okay it's gonna be flats it's gonna be flats that are adjacent to deeper water it can be humps I'm looking for fish on the bottom and suspended fish okay you know you typically hear about these being successful on river ledges and there's some ledges on the lakes I'm fishing that this will work with as well but guys this spoon it, it's gonna go after the big fish it will get some of them fish that are even a little pressured or maybe not in a feeding mode to bite and guys I've just had a lot of fun with it this summer so uh, I've caught fish on a spoon before and I, I know this summer though I've kind of went more into it and it's been a blast so I'm gonna keep throwing it in August okay now just a couple things on my gear if you're interested just to hear I mean 20 pound four carbons where I'm throwing it on I have it on a um, it's my Denali attack 711 extra heavy rod okay this one that's on it right now is the Falcon spoon it's a little skinnier uh, so if you want a smaller spoon they have it I've been testing these out I personally though like this bigger one now let's go into my next lure really quick guys I've started a new podcast called real life and fishing if you're interested in listening to some great conversations about life and of course we talk about fishing go check it out after the video guys the next lure that I'm gonna share okay the next lure that I'm gonna talk about okay now this is one that I, I think anybody can throw you might not have the confidence in it but it's something that it can be thrown in a pond it can be thrown at lakes that I'm about to talk about shallow lakes deep lakes just depends on your area but it's a frog okay guys so I have two frogs right here and I have a bunch of frogs in the box I know I've talked about this toe thumper frog lately but just to show you guys I, I have I have almost every brand of frog there is even that poppin perch I love this color right here uh, in Spro they call it red ear I believe uh, the red ear I think right here in Toe Thumper, they call it the yellow belly. Okay, these are my top two colors with it. I will have the other colors, the blacks, the whites, just traditional as well. The reason though, guys, is frog. Okay, why, why, why frogs, I mean, they can be good, you know, throughout the summer, but August is a special time to get them out. Okay, there's a couple factors with it. There are a big bass population, not a big bass, there are groups of fish that are gonna be moving more shallower on lakes in the summer. For some reasons, that thermocline, I just think it sets up, and there are some fish that are just moving up, and they're looking for a couple meals of the day. They're looking for big meals. It could be, it could be the, you know, they're, they're looking for brim. It could be a frog, but guys, there are big fish to be caught with a frog. That nine pounder that I talked about earlier that I caught in Arkansas, which is my biggest Arkansas fish, guys, and I've caught double digits in Texas, but I know Arkansas, uh, it's hard to catch double digits. But that nine I caught that was in two foot of water was relating around a cypress tree on a big worm. Now, it, it, you know, frogs are great to throw around cypress trees. I have some friends, uh, if you're watching, you know who you are, that have caught big fish with these in the summer. And guys, I'm gonna have this frog on. Of course, target areas, shade. Find the shade on your lake. It could be a dock. It could be, once again, a cypress tree with the branches coming off. Look for that shade. It could be grass, lily pads. Look for the shade. Now, one thing with it, though, on that shade, in these areas, okay, one thing with it is you need some deep water nearby. And deep water guys can be five or six feet or four feet, okay? It don't gotta be 20 feet. If it retrieves, you can walk it 
One thing I know is to try to walk it and then pause it and let that thing sit for a little bit, okay? I am have a hard time with doing that, of being patient. I'm going to try to move this guy around, try to create a reaction strike, not let him look at it long. But I know some of the better frog fishermen just have that knack of just knowing when to stop it, when to let it sit there. So I don't know if that's you or if, if, if you're just, you know, still trying to figure it out. But I just know me, I, I have a hard time with it. So guys, hey, the frog will catch big fish. And like I said, remember with me, if you watch the channel enough, I like catching big fish, okay? Uh, so if you want to catch a big fish this August, hey, have your frog on, okay? And go out there, get after it. Let me know if you've caught some big fish on a frog. If you are enjoying today's video and would like to support any members from the Bass Fishing Declassified team, then after the video, go to fishthemoment.com and check out our one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons. Bass Fishing Declassified is brought to you by Fish the Moment. Please like and subscribe the page if you have not, and if you are interested in any of the products on Fish the Moment, remember, you are supporting the Bass Fishing Declassified channel. Appreciate it. Let's get back to the video. Hey guys, Kyle Cordiano with Bass Fishing Declassified. Listen real quick, I'm going to tell you a quick tip, technique, and bait to catch more bass in these hot summer months right now. I fished a lot of night tournaments. Uh, my good partner TJ Martin and I won a lot of money fishing night tournaments. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you like a little tip that we did that, that me and TJ did a lot to catch some fish. And I hope it helps you guys catch some fish. If you like to go night fishing, if you haven't tried it, hopefully you take your time get some sleep that day and try one of these night tournaments or go fishing uh, from like midnight till 4 or 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. something like that give this a shot so the first part of the fishing night is fishing docks it's no secret at nighttime one of the best things you can do is drive around the lake carefully slow and look for lit areas so marinas private docks any any dock that has a bright light in the back of a pocket is going to be loaded with bait and perch and insects and everything else and bass are going to be right there eating on them so if you don't have anything else going at night go chase the light pattern it is a dominant pattern at nighttime in the summer and it catches so many big bass you'll do so much better at night than you do during the day and now i'm going to tell you the bait i can't believe i'm telling you the bait g larue has been around a really long time and so has this bait this is the four inch Jean larue salt crawl They've got it in a lot of cool colors, and I've got my own stash. This is my special stash. This is not even in a bag because I go through so many. Uh, this is a black neon chartreuse 4-inch Jean LaRue salt craw. It's just black neon, which is black with a little red flake, and it's got these really bright chartreuse pinchers on it. I have thrown this in crystal clear water in Oklahoma and in dirty water at night. It just flat out catches the crap out of bass at night. Real simple rigging. Show you guys how to rig it. Um, I don't have it rigged up. I'm at lacrosse right now, but I recommend throwing it on either a three aught, uh, the new Trocar Pro V Bin three aught. That's the TK 105, or if you just like the old school HD Worm uh, with the more round bin, just offset shank there, and that again is in a three aught. You can go to a 4 aught and you can even throw like a flipping style hook if you'd like. But I'm a real big believer in this new Pro V bin hook. Uh, and I'll show you. It sets up real easy. I'm just Texas rigging it. I'm pegging. Uh, I usually had two rigged up. So I'd have like a quarter ounce weight or something really light and maybe a three eight ounce weight. And I'd have both rigged up because sometimes that rate of fall is what they wanted. And you could tell uh, whether or not they wanted the slow rate of fall with the light tungsten. And just had it pegged or if they wanted a faster rate of fall the three eights the three eights was that i mean you just texas rig it you've seen this a hundred times you back it in and then you're just going to kind of line it up and i really like these straight shank hooks um for this bait you can tell that gene larue salt cross not real thick so you don't need that extra wide gap hook uh you don't really need a big flipping hook you just need a really good strong uh or sharp pointed hook and it's just that you don't even have to like skin hook it if you want to you can you could put you could just barely skin hook it if you're worried about it uh, grabbing a dock or something but literally you can keep it exposed like that you're flipping open water you're literally throwing at open water sitting under a light in a dock and you peg that up throw that in there again you could go to a four aught if you if you want the link to come a little bit closer but i like a three aught it allows that thing to just move just a little bit more but this is a real subtle action bait and they'll just flat out eat the crap out of it Keep it simple. I'm gonna throw it on a seven foot or seven foot three uh, Kistler KLX or Helium, uh, medium heavy, 
15 to 17 pound fluorocarbons just fine. You're not gonna be really getting them in too much. I mean, there's a chance they could take you around in the dock. For the most part, you're fishing that open water, that, that ambient light that's cast around it. And a lot of times those fish are either right in the middle of the light or they're sitting just outside of the light or maybe right where the walkway is in the dock. Um, but that is really simple. Uh, get over to LureNet.com. You can get those there. They've got a few colors available right now. They're only like $3.99 or $4.99 a pack. You can use my coupon code, Cordiana15, saves you 15%. They give me a little kickback. And why I got you guys listening. Have you guys seen this new Bubba scale? This thing is incredible. We've been using all year on the Tackle Warehouse Invitationals. And I have fallen in love with this thing. It's got a bright, colorful screen. You can set it up. It automatically tells you what your lowest one is when you weigh your six fish and boom, you replace it, you go take it out. These things are now available. It's just after I cast, they are available. And guess what? You listeners here at Bass Fishing Declassified, it's the first time I've given this out, but I can save you 15% on these scales and you can use the code KCF15. K for Kyle, C for Cordiana, F for fishing, one five fifteen KCF15. Saves you 15% if you go buy any of their Bubba products. But this is an awesome scale, and I know a lot of people are wanting it, so I wanted to share that with you guys. Anyway, hope these tips help you. Hope you like the Bubba scale or any of the other Bubba products that are out there that are incredible. I got a beer, by the way. Uh, but anyway, guys, have fun fishing. We'll see you on the next one. One of my favorite ways to fish during the month of August on deep natural lakes that we have up here in Wisconsin, Minnesota, New York, pretty much anywhere across the northern part of the country is to find some deep isolated rock piles either on the top of deep main lake humps or off the tips of deep main lake points. Now both of these areas are going to be really good for both largemouth and smallmouth bass. Because we're talking about August, it's going to be the warmest water temperatures of the year, so there's going to be a lot of fish that are set up in their summer patterns. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can go about catching these fish, but one of my favorite ways to do it to generate both numbers as well as better quality bites is with a little finesse jig like this. This is the tightrope firework jig. I've got it paired up with a Poor Boys Erie Darter Junior. This thing is magic on a bunch of those deep rocks. Now specifically, what I'm gonna be looking for are those deep main lake humps that have little isolated patches of rock. Ideally, what I want is that hump to break through the thermocline. So you, maybe the thermocline's in say 30 feet of water, the hump comes out of 50 and tops out at 25. You have a lot of smallmouth bass that'll be using that hump to go out and push forage species like smelt, alewife, cisco into the side of that hump. And the little rock patches create their home base. That's where they're gonna be. The other areas are gonna be uh, along the same lines. I'm looking for deep main lake points that have rock patches out on the tip of it, generally right around where the thermocline hits that point. If you can identify those, you grab yourself the little tight rope jig, you fire it out there, and this thing walks along the bottom great. Because of the fact that it's trimmed real short and you've got a good ball head on here, it does not get snagged in the rocks like a football head jig will. It actually like walks along the bottom and therefore presents an easy meal for both largemouth and smallmouth bass. Guys, if you happen to live around some natural northern lakes and you wanna catch some of those big summertime bass, smallmouth and largemouth grab yourself a little finesse jig like this go find some rocks on those humps and points that come in contact with the thermocline you're going to catch some big ones hey guys what's up welcome back here to another edition of bass fishing declassified and i really appreciate you guys joining us for today's episode got a good one for you guys today we're going to be talking about my favorite august lure and my favorite uh, way to fish it type of area to fish it in I think it's going to really help you guys out because man i think that august is probably the most difficult month to catch bass in august first part of september it's just hard to catch them it doesn't matter if you're fishing deep or shallow but i'm going to share with you guys something that's really worked good for me the past three years and that is fishing this mega bass z2 crankbait uh, in the areas that i'm going to talk about here guys i probably caught well not probably i know for sure i've caught more bass on this z2 crankbait in August, the last three seasons than any other lure by far. It's been a great producer for me. And it's just a sort of a medi medium wobbling crankbait. It's a small profile. And there's just something about the action and the colors that comes in and the profiles that bass really like it in the situations I'm going to, to get into here. Um, first of all, one of the key elements for this working 
is you have to be in the right type of water. And the right type of water for this is um, shallow water with stained water uh, and shallow cover too. It can be rock, it can be wood, it can be shallow grass. But my favorite scenario, if you guys gave me one scenario to fish the Z2 in, it would be water visibility of like around 12 inches in visibility with some shallow wood cover. Um, the thing that makes this bait really unique is that um, it's just as weedless as a square bill crankbait. I throw this thing in the middle of lay down trees just like I would a square bill crankbait. It really darts over the limbs and comes off and deflects really nice. So what I look for is I get it like into the upper creek arms, the, the backs of the river sections like that, and I look for shallow wood. Lay down trees, stumps, maybe some shallow docks. And also, if you got any shallow rock, it can work really good. Like say, for example, you're fishing up in a creek and you come to a channel bank. Um, if you got dirty water with rock along those channel banks, it can be a really good way to catch them. And the two colors I use, I usually use some type of the chartreuse pattern if the water's really dirty or in low light conditions, early in the morning, late in the evening, this is my color. And up in the day, even if the water's dirty, if I have like bright sun, not much wind, I go to more of a shad pattern here. But guys, give them a try. I'm fishing them uh, most of the time on anywhere between 12 to 15 pound test, Seaguar and Vizex line. Um, I do use it on a spinning rod too. Um, I'll use it uh, most of the time. Well, both guys, I'll use it on a spinning rod and a bait caster. If I'm trying to get the bait at a little bit deeper, uh, you know, depth, I'll use a spinning rod with like 10 to 12 pound test line. And if I'm in really dirty water, pitching it around isolated lay downs and casting it, I'll use a bait caster with uh, probably 15 pound test Seaguar and Vizex. Um, but anyway, Megabass Z2 crankbait, by far my favorite August lures. Um, it'll get you some bites for sure. If you get in those conditions I described, um, it'll catch whatever fish are there. So hope it helps out. We'll see you guys next time.